Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Sing to him. Yes, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Exult in his holy name. Rejoice, you who worship the Lord. Search for the Lord and for his strength. Continually seek him. Thank you, Mel. Morning, everybody. Morning, you can say good morning. <laughs> um, thank you, Martin. Um, so, yeah, over the next five minutes or so, um, I'm going to give a little bit of context around um, what uh, the lockdown has been like for the Reed family, um, and then specifically talk about how um, God's been moving in in uh, the time that we've been locked down. So. Um, there'd be a number of significant things that have started to happen. Um, and then at the end, I'd like to uh, just reflect on some learning that that's really come out of this period for me and still continues to do so. So um, I will refer to the psalm first of all, because actually some of it, uh, the psalm actually depicts quite a lot of what's been going on in our household. So, um, you know, giving thanks to the Lord. We, we, um, continue to um, say thank you to him even though we are locked down because um, actually we all know that we have freedom in Christ um, it might feel that we're locked down socially but actually we're not locked down at all our spirits are completely free um, there has been a sense of making uh, a real effort to um, communicate God's love to our neighbors and to a wider field um, I know there's been a lot of prayer, there's been a lot of themes around praying for those. And I think, you know, this has been a time where a lot of people have had opportunity to reflect on how they live their lives and what's important to them. And um, for us, we've seen such a change as well in terms of the number of families that walk along the canal path, which we can see out our window. And um, it's been a real, you know, a lovely experience to see families walking and talking together it's been absolutely amazing not that they didn't before but it seems like the numbers have grown um we also have a house which is full of music all the time so um some of you may know that sam uh, is at leeds college of music he's got a studio in his bedroom so he's been writing uh worship songs and um, other songs um and uh, been releasing those <clears throat> on Spotify and things like that. So there's not a time where, <clears throat> excuse me, music isn't sort of playing, whether UCB radio's on or whether Sam's playing or whether Archie's stepped down into the, the lounge and started playing the piano. It's, it's been a place where music has been playing and a lot of the time God is being worshiped through that. Um, I think the other thing for me is that I've had opportunity to um, to actually be quite um, open about my faith in my work situation. I'll touch on that a little bit later on as well. And the other element has been um, a real opportunity to seek God's face, um, an opportunity to spend time reflecting on what he means to me and actually to our family and um, and all other or lots of my friends and and just really really focusing on that so to give you some context um there's four of us at home um the two cats and the dog 15 year old dog that's been a challenge she uh 15 year old dog um can can uh, she, she's loved having us at home because most of the time we haven't been here the boys um have brought all their stuff home so we've had to accommodate not lots of um stuff um so everywhere you can find a place to hide um bits of uh, you know, crockery or whatever it is it's all crammed in here mel and i have been working um i work from my study upstairs and mel works downstairs on the kitchen table um again we've had a few challenges around technology getting a printer working for mel and things like that but now we're all settled and and we're working uh, well together the one thing I have noticed is a real sense of unity um, and part of the um, 
a theology uh, course that I've been doing was around um, looking at how the Holy Spirit uh, works and, and how the Holy Spirit, um, what, what environment the Holy Spirit really thrives in and works in. And a sense of unity is really important. And we prayed through this pretty much every day that we have a real sense of unity in our marriage, in our family, uh, in our relationships. And uh, I feel that's been a real a blessing, actually, a real blessing. Um, so there haven't really been any arguments, uh, which has been amazing, because normally there are. <laughs> um, and actually, we got into quite a good routine as well. Um, one of the biggest challenges for me has been, actually, we talk about this, we're living in our bubble. And for us, our bubble's been quite, you know, been very lovely. Um, but for others, we recognize it's not so. And um, my mum lost her husband um, six years or so, oh. four years ago. And um, she's been isolated in Painswick on her own. So for me, that's been a real challenge, um, keeping her spirits up. And uh, I ring her twice a day. Uh, we've even got her FaceTiming, which has been incredible and frustrating um, <clears throat> in, in, in each portion. But um, again, we've been able to support her with getting her to real fo really focus on God's love through this. And um, she's found that her neighbors have really stepped up and that's been an amazing um, you know, blessing through that. Um, the other thing that I found is through my work, as I mentioned, um, I've been able to be quite specific or, or more intentional about the fact that I'm a Christian, um, which led to a very interesting conversation after a, a web conference that I had in Malta, not actually in Malta, but speaking in Malta, sorry. Um, and um, afterwards, one of the, uh, met, um, the group who were on the call said, um, could I have a minute with you afterwards? And, I, and so I said, yeah, no problem at all. And uh, I didn't particularly know this person. And they said to me, um, I happened to mention that I'd been thinking about you know, the lockdown and stuff. And he said, I was really touched by what you said. And actually, I'm a Christian. And it allowed us to never, never have done before. So it was a real amazing blessing. And, and actually, that relationship, I suspect, will grow and grow because uh, it looks like we're going to be partnering and doing some stuff together, which has really been great. Um, in terms of the other things that we've tried to do, we try to stay away from the news because we want to see God working through this. And we, we find that a lot of times the news is quite negative and um, actually that, uh, you know, it's all about selling press and airtime and everything else. And so we have tried to stay away from that and just pray God's blessing into it. Um, in terms of the activities we've been doing, um, I think people have mentioned before Lectio 365, um, it's a fantastic resource, uh, which we have, again, uh, as, a, as a couple, have been doing together. Um, I have to say there's challenges with it. <clears throat> if you do it late at night, it will lull you into a sense of sleep because it's so peaceful and, and lovely. And, and again, if it's early in the morning, it can do the same thing. So you've got to really focus and concentrate. But we found that a really real blessing um, a real channel for God's spirit to, to come to us. We've continued with um, our UCB that we do um, pretty much on a regular basis. Um, and another um, devotional called uh, Jesus Calling, which often um, incredibly just touches on the things that are really important in our hearts. Um, what I want to leave you with, because I'm aware I've kind of used five minutes or so, are um, just just a few things that in terms of reflection that have really come to me and that is that um, seeking God's face uh, in a time where we might feel that things are quite strange and, and um, abnormal um, is a really important time for us. We, we are so busy. Um, we are, you know, do stuff for no reason at all. We found ourselves actually questioning a lot of the time the things that we've done um, we do normally um, and actually really understand now that space giving space you know being still and focusing on God is so important and is really important for our well-being 
And that is something we will continue to do outside this lockdown. I'd like to finish with a little prayer, a um, very short prayer for you. Um, Heavenly Father, I would like to pray against loneliness, against fear, and against isolation. May your spirit replace that with a sense of peace, confidence, and unity. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ben. And now, Jenny. Right, good morning, everybody. The significant thing about this time for me has been having time. I know a lot of you will think you've got too much time, but for me, not having to rush around and being busy has been really significant. I've had time to enjoy nature and the beauty around me. I've had time to draw closer to God. I've had time to get to know my neighbours. I've always loved nature, being outside, planting my garden, feeling the sun on my face. We're fortunate to have a small enclosed back garden and it's been uplifting to sit there or potter around planting things in this glorious weather. I feel that this unprecedented warmth and sunshine has been a gift from our loving Heavenly Father, a sign that while we are going through this difficult time, he still loves and cares for us. Because of our age, we haven't really been going out, but we have been going to Stratford Park. And we have seen such an amazing change in the nature there. In March, the trees and ground were bare and brown. It came into April and the buds and blossom appeared. The daffodils came out to be replaced by tulips after which came alliums and irises. The leaves came out in glorious greens and rusts, and we would literally lift up our heads to the sky and praise and thank God for this beautiful place that we lived in and for his creation given for our enjoyment. Some of you will know that along with Marlene and Kim, I'm doing a missional course called Forge. With this comes a mentor. <clears throat> who soon sussed out my weak spots. I'm a bit impulsive and find it difficult to sit still and relax. I'm always thinking of the next thing I need to do. She wanted me to be still in God and suggested I do some biblical meditation, thinking of a verse, meditating on a verse or a phrase about Jesus. But this didn't work for me. After five seconds, my mind would be all over the place. Then Moretta suggested I use an app on my phone called Live From Rest. There are many different subjects to meditate on, usually five or ten minutes, with a short Bible reading and prayer. I find this really helpful to still my mind and keep me focused on Jesus. For anyone feeling stressed or anxious or like me can't really sit still I would recommend it. The other thing she wanted me to do was to write notes on my bible readings. I'm not very good at doing that but as like Ben I've been reading through Lectio 365 and I found some amazing bible verses and thoughts that I've reflected on. The Psalms are especially uplifting. A couple are Psalm 13 verse 5, but I trust in your unfailing love. Psalm 121 verse 7, the Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. And the amazing Psalm 91, a verse from Philippines chapter 4, don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything then you would experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. The other thing she encouraged me to do was to set goals and write them down. We decided I should get to know my neighbours. 
especially a family who live opposite me. They have five young children, the husband has ill health, and I think they find life uh, an uphill struggle. We have an open front lawn and Jeff had dug part of it up so I could have a flower border. This meant that while I was outside, I could say hello and speak to people passing. The couple over the road would often sit on their front step. So I set up a sort of friendship with them while social distancing, of course, which mostly meant us shouting over the road to each other. My goals are to get to know her and her children better, to gain her trust, and ultimately when the children go back to school, to invite her over and pray for her and be a support to her. One day I was talking to her and their eldest son, aged about 14, came out and started messing about saying he was bored. I suggested he mowed the lawn, not even knowing if they possessed a lawnmower. The next minute he appeared from the back of the house with a lawnmower and not only mowed their lawn but their elderly neighbours too. We talked about the garden a bit more and I suggested a few more things they could do to tidy it up. So they started coming over to borrow garden tools. It gave Jeff and me great joy to see the whole family out in the garden strimming and pruning and cutting things down. Next they started on the back and we realised we could hear children's voices. They were outside playing, whereas previously they'd been shut indoors. On VE day she came and asked if we were doing anything, which we weren't. So Moretta came round and with my neighbour and her children, we sat on our front gardens and chatted. The children made bunting and I made cupcakes and scones. We offered these to people who walked by and one little boy was delighted to have one, not only on the way to the shops, but on the way back as well. I don't want to come out of this time the same person that I was when we went into lockdown. I want to be closer to God, to abide in him. What a lovely word that is. It conjures up the feeling of security of being in a safe place and where better place to be. I'm beginning to hear those little whispers from God, make a cake, make a phone call, send a text. This week I had a phone call from a friend, two cards from other friends and an encouraging text. This meant so much to me. I felt I was being remembered, cared for. At our Friday morning prayer meeting, we take a Bible verse that has spoken to us. This has continued on our Friday morning app, and I've counted up 55 encouraging Bible verses since lockdown. And I will leave you with one from Cedria, I have her permission, that spoke to me this week. It's from John 14, verse 27. Jesus' words to his disciples before he left them. I am leaving you a gift, peace of mind and heart, and the peace I give you is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid.